What are you doing up this time of night? Oh, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't either. Hey, Grandma, did you see these? What are those? Daddy's wedding present from Kim. Some gift, huh? Diamonds. They certainly are beautiful. Yeah, Kim sure has great taste. Yes, I'll give her that. What's that supposed to mean? I always thought that the gentleman was supposed to give the diamonds. Oh, Grandma, not anymore. Things have changed. Besides, Dad and Kim are breaking with tradition. Did you see the car he gave her? I saw it. And? I think your father has pretty good taste, too. Yeah. <laughs> what if I make some coffee? That would be great. Sounds like a great idea. Hey, oh. Daddy. Well, you two look bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for this hour of the morning. Oh, I had three hours of sleep. Well, we were too excited to sleep, but you are getting married in a few hours. You should be getting your beauty rest. Aren't I beautiful enough? I couldn't <laughs> sleep. Kim certainly does have good taste. Those cufflinks are beautiful. Yes, yeah, she does have good taste. I said that to her not three hours ago. <laughs> Who, for goodness sake, is silly enough to be out at this hour? I don't know, but let's find out. Oh, no! I don't believe it! Did I wake you? Did you get sleep? Oh, well, I had about two winks worth, and then I decided to get up, and I lit the fire, and... Anyway, what are you doing here this time of the morning? Well, I know how forgetful brides tend to be. And I also know that it's very important for you to keep up your strength today. So, I brought you some breakfast. Ooh, terrific. <laughs> I didn't feel like cooking anyway. And I think we should make you some decaffeinated coffee. I don't want you getting nervous on us now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you the truth, I don't think I'm going to be nervous. But I am having trouble believing this is all real. Oh. Uh, yeah, you and Bob are absolutely perfect for each other. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I think so, too. We certainly have been through a lot together. Hardships as well as joys. And besides loving him, he is my best friend. That's how I feel about Steve. Yes, I know. You know what? what? You are a godsend. <laughs> oh, no, please. Yes, yes. All well, I did was bring you breakfast. Well, I don't care. That's not important. You could have brought me old shoestrings. That's <laughs> the important thing is you. I am so glad you are here. <laughs> Frank is my husband. How can I turn him in? Cal, what am I going to do with this tape? I don't know, Maggie. Well, it's just great for you, isn't it? Now you finally got him where you want him, knowing how you feel about him. It's a perfect opportunity for you to just to pay him back for all the times he's been unjust to you. Yeah, I could do that. If I were a vindictive person which I'm not. I'm not going to turn Frank in, Maggie. I'm going to leave that decision up to you. As the world turns, I bet you thought we weren't coming. I thought you weren't coming. <laughs> you look wonderful. Mom. 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 Oh, oh, gosh. Oh, Excuse gosh. Excuse me, little man. Do you take itinerary? Oh, not you. Oh, oh, I don't. Don't. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, you look pretty good for an old man. Thanks a lot. What do you do? <laughs> Hello, Mom. Oh, Mom. Oh, oh, good to see you. This is Granny. Donald, do you believe this? Oh, my God. Goodness, oh, you have grown up so much. <laughs> now, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you, Penny? Come here, come here. All the way here, Franny. She was telling me how the last time she saw you, you were a skinny little kid hanging from parallel bars. Oh, now, Don, don't tease her. <laughs> you think you two guys were going to be able to be here? Well, now, that was the point. You see, it's called a surprise. Uh, a surprise? <laughs> a surprise. You didn't think we'd miss your wedding, did you? 
Well, then where's my present? I'm it. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, for a while, I thought we were going to have to break in here and camp out. Oh, our flight from Chicago was so late, and poor Donald, I just made him sit there and wait for my London flight to come in. Oh, stop. Hey, now, listen, somebody must have been in on this. Who was it? Come on. I confess. I confess. All right. I called Ellen. At the last minute, I wasn't sure if we could get in. Oh, that Ellen. She made so much of the letter that you wrote her and told her that you were too busy to come and so on and on. You can't trust anybody, Mom. No, Mom, where's not. Dad? Didn't he come with you? Well, of course he wanted to come, but he got a middle ear infection at the last minute, and the doctor said he could not fly. Nothing serious, I hope. I wrote you all this news to London, miss. <laughs> no, when I talked to him this afternoon, he, he was really feeling better. Oh, good. Hey, Aunt Penny, how's Amy? Oh, she's fine. Matter of fact, I saw her in uh, school last week. She sends her best. Now, how's Anton? How's he doing? Anton, oh, busy as ever. Oh, he, he really did. He wanted to come, but... He is so busy making final preparations. You know, the Grand Prix trials are next week. Oh, right. Isn't he a little old for doing all of that sort of thing? Whoopsies. No, <clears throat> never too old. You better not let him hear you say that. <laughs> matter of fact, he keeps him young. Me too, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, how's Mary, Don? Yeah, how come she didn't make it? Well, she wanted to come, but at the last minute she decided to stay with Timmy. Well, nothing's wrong, I hope. No, 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 no. Uh, Timmy, whom I think we should refer to as Tim from now on, right. he came in second in the semifinals in the state swim meet. So, yeah. 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 so Mary decided she'd better stay and cheer him on in the finals. Hey, that's terrific. Boy, it's good to have you two sure here. Is. I can't remember the last time. I think it was a Christmas. No, 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 no. It was no. the traditional Hughes Fourth of July picnic in the backyard. No, no, no you're, you're all wrong. wrong. No, you're all wrong. We were all together for Tom and Margaret's wedding. No, were we? No, no. no. Anyway, 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 as long as the Hughes family can find some reason to celebrate, we'll all keep getting together. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to be able to use weddings, though, for very much longer because we only have one left. Well, Franny, looks like you're next. Believe me, there's no other place I'd rather be. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and you've been... You've been like my mother for so long. I really have. You've always been there for me. I've been able to count on you for everything. For your warmth and your support. And your love. <laughs> I'm just so happy I can be here today with you. Oh, bless you. Me too. <laughs> You know, it's funny, but I keep thinking about that day. I, I, I was so excited about that first day when we met in the park. Oh, heavens, yes. I remember that, too. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Whenever anything important happens in our lives, we always remember that. Mm -hmm. You were some little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Cute and bright and persuasive, <laughs> which is a polite way of saying pushy. <laughs> And oh, how you love squirrels. It's Holy right. smokes, you love to talk to squirrels. <laughs> I love to talk to them, but Emmy loved chasing them. And didn't, wasn't she a pistol Ooh. when she was a little girl? Mm. God, it was a long time ago. I'll say it was. <sighs> and I was in such rough shape then. Mm. And you really helped bring me out of myself. I was trapped in that awful marriage. Yeah, John. Yeah. And he was recovering from that accident. Mm. You remember that? Oh, I remember that. I remember thinking how cruel it was for you to stay with him for such a long time. For all intents and purposes, I guess I felt my life was pretty much over and I was getting just about what I deserved. Mm. And then I began to really look forward to meeting you in the park. <laughs> I used to draw pictures of those squirrels every oh, day. Lord, and I, I, I could always count on you whenever you saw them. You'd always tell me how wonderful they were. Well, you know, they really were. <laughs> they, as a matter of fact, I found a couple of those, I'd say. They were in a packing box up in the oh, attic. Oh, God, you were such a good friend to me then. I don't know if you know how special that was to me. You always made me feel so important. But don't you realize that you gave me a lot, too? What? Well, yes, you did. I mean, I was really feeling pretty sorry for myself. Oh, those days. please, you've never yeah, felt no, sorry. No, I, I was, and you showed me uh, that I should just stop that, and that it was okay to reach out again, and that made me feel important. Well, you were, and you still are, to me. The thing is, sweetheart, you taught me to love again. 
I really did that. You bet your boots. It wasn't such a... It wasn't so bad for a fifth grader, huh? You're not so bad now, either. <laughs> You're the assistant DA, Maggie. You tell me what to do. I don't believe this. You're telling me that I have to turn in my own husband and I can't do that. No, I'm not telling you anything. Well, then why are you giving me this tape? What tape? I never saw any tape. I never heard of any tape. I don't know what you're talking about. Wait a minute. I'm all confused. You're the one who insisted that it existed. You're the one who wanted to prove it to me. Well, it's your story, not mine. Why? I mean, you yourself said that you could put Frank away. It would be the perfect opportunity for you to get him out of your life. Get him out of my life, but not your life. You'd still love him. No, no thanks. I'm utterly amazed. I, I think you'd jump at a chance to put Frank away for good. Oh, don't get me wrong, Maggie. I mean, it's not like that I like Frank or anything. I'd just soon see him rot in prison. But what good would that do me? I mean, he'd be behind bars, where he belongs, incidentally. And it'd just hurt you, and I'd still be alone. I can't do that, Maggie. I love you. Uncle Don, if our next family reunion depends on my getting married, then we'd all better enjoy this one because it's going to be a long stretch. Well, now, she's right, Don. We've got to give her a chance to live a little. A girl like Granny should take advantage of her youth and her good looks. Better play the field. Better have all those boys take her out on wonderful romantic dates. Oh, especially at Yale. I'll bet there are plenty of well-bred MFA students, right? Yeah, sure. Well, you're right as always, Penny, and for any knows, I was only kidding. <laughs> All this oh, talk about romance and dates. Franny's going to college. She's not out <laughs> husband Adjusting. hunting. I think she's terribly lucky to be there at Yale, too. And I, for one, hope that she's spending her time in the library and not traipsing around the countryside. Well, that's certainly where I spent my freshman year. Oh, me too. Library. Yeah, Didn't I paid rent there. Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot, you guys. <laughs> Sometimes, Mom, I think you're too practical. <laughs> Somebody in this family has to be. Hey, does anybody remember the time that Penny brought the drama club over to the house when Mom and Dad were away? Said it was a meeting? <laughs> hmm? Mm -hmm. Wasn't a meeting. No. It was a party. You betcha. <laughs> And everything was fine until one of the neighbors complained about the noise. And then poor Grandpa had to cover and go to the door. <laughs> what happened? Mm, not much. What do you mean, not uh, much? I lived in constant dread that if I didn't improve my grades, I wouldn't be allowed to stay in the drama club. Oh, Grandma, you did that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Worked, too, didn't it? <laughs> well, I got straight A's and got to lead in the next play. <laughs> See? <laughs> well, I know who the leading lady is tomorrow. Who is the maid of honor? Well, I, I thought it was going to be Franny. Well, that was the plan. I was supposed to be. And I really wanted to be, but I missed my fittings. Well, oh. she got kind of tied up at school and got here late. Oh, what a shame. I bet Kim is disappointed. She is. Yeah, I've talked to Kim about it. Um, she knows how sorry I am, and she's been very understanding. Besides, Freddie got uh, something more important to do. She's got to coach her old man and see that he doesn't forget his lines tomorrow. <laughs> you think he can remember it? Well, nobody expects me to, but uh, I sure hope Kim remembers it. Oh, she will. Oh, I am so looking forward to meeting Kim. <laughs> well, one thing's for sure. She's going to be surprised to see us. <laughs> Who's, that? Who's that now? Hi. Bob, I'm so glad your lights are on. Mm -hmm. I, I was wanting to stop by and just Go on, Lisa. We're all listening. Hi, <laughs> Penny. <laughs> no, yes. no, yes, 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 yes. Hi, how are you? <laughs> what oh the, my, what is the fact that you was falling apart? <laughs> you look wonderful. You haven't changed a bit. Oh, how long is it? Oh, we're not going to talk about no, it. No, not at all. Oh, come here. <laughs> so good to see you. And hi, good to see you too, Donald. Uh, good to see you, Lisa. No, I really mean that. It's, uh, how, how is uh, your uh, Mary? Mary? Yes, yes. Mary. Good. And, and little, uh, little Timmy. Uh, Timmy. Timmy. I, yeah. I don't know how I could forget him. <laughs> well, I, it looks like I've kind of broken in on a family reunion. I didn't mean to do that. No, uh, that's not true at all, because you are part of this family yourself. <laughs> well, I think Don and I better go upstairs and get settled in our rooms. Huh? Right, Come on, Friday, right. we'll find a way. Right. No, I'll take uh, <laughs> Penny's barbell collection. <laughs> 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 well, Bob, I, I really am glad you're still awake. I, I was just on my way home from the yacht getting ready for everything tomorrow, and I just wanted to drop in and, and tell you I wish you well. <laughs> 
I just can't get over it. Well, you don't have to make excuses for dropping by here ever. You know that. Oh, I know. I, but I am making excuses. It's just... It, it's really true. I want you to know I'm so happy for you and for Kim. My two best friends. Getting married. <laughs> well, you're one of our best friends, too. Oh. Well, we've... We've been through a lot together, haven't we? I'll say we have. <laughs> When we got married, I couldn't cook. And what's more, I didn't even want to learn. I didn't marry you for your cooking, Lisa. I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> oh, but later on, I learned to cook. I remember, oh, this was after you and I got divorced, but Nancy, I think she went away and left all the Hughes men alone, and I thought, I'm going to prove to everybody I can cook. And I cooked a scrumptious dinner, topped it off with Cherry's Jubilee, and almost burned down the house. <laughs> well, it was only four alarms. <laughs> Oh. Well, I just wanted you to know how happy I am for you. Both of you. Thank you. <sighs> You're a dynamite lady, Lisa Miller. Hey, don't start that. You make me cry. And the wedding's just a few hours away. So. Kim's a lucky lady. just so disappointed Steve can't make it to the wedding oh, he's chomping at the bit to get out of there I can tell you but the doctors say he should stay in till he gets his strength back but the important thing is actually he is getting better and thank God you two are out of danger yeah oh wait look I forgot this is for you what is this I'll read it Dear Kim, <laughs> I was really hoping I could dance at your wedding. <laughs> but it looks like I'm not going to make it. I know that in the past we haven't always seen eye to eye. I know you didn't always have such a high opinion of me, and there was a time when you were right. It means a great deal to me that we've been able to overcome our problems and pull together as a family. Being laid up like this has given me time to think. When you've been close to death, you realize how important the people are that you love. You are very important to me. I wish I could tell you this in person, but since I can't, I'll simply tell you that my heart is with you and Bob. And I wish you every happiness in the world. Steve. Thank you. Now, how did I know that I'd find you two together here? Oh, Frank. What are you doing here, Maggie? I might ask you the same question. It's nearly four in the morning. Who's with Jill? I got the babysitter to stay overnight because we had a sunrise wedding to attend. Remember? Of course I remember. Well, you still haven't answered my question. I'm working, and you know that. Oh, do I? And I'm not finished. Cal and I have... You are finished, as far as I'm concerned. What are you saying? That this little tape at date is over. Look, maybe I'll leave, Maggie. Well, that's the first good idea you've had. I'll just be down the hall if you need me. She's not going to need you, Randolph. Look, Frank, I wasn't talking to you, but I hope you realize this is my cabin. And I'd be very happy to throw you out of it. I don't give a damn whose cabin this is. I just want to talk to my wife alone. All right, Maggie? Yes. Two minutes, Frank. Frank, what are you doing? What do you mean? He's right. You have no reason to treat him that way, and he could have you thrown off. Well, let him try. And you have no business being here. Neither do you. Oh, yes, I do. I told you I'm doing business. Oh, you call sneaking around at 4 o'clock in the morning business? Well, I'm going to take you home, and we're going to talk about that business. Fine, because there are a few questions I'd like to ask you, too. Well, go ahead, Counselor. Ask. 
I think you know what I'm talking about, Frank. No, I'm totally in the dark here. So try me. Why are you here at the yacht? Because I like this place. Our friends come here. Yeah, let's see, Diana McCall is the owner and Cal, two of your closest friends. What other friends do you have Look, here, Frank? What does it matter? Because that's, you said that's why you're coming. Why am I getting the third degree here? Because I just thought you might be meeting some new people. Or learning new things, Maggie? Now just what does that mean? You're mad because I'm on to you too, right? There's nothing to be on to. Well, you looked pretty cozy last night at the bar. Oh, Frank, I told you we have to pretend like we're having an affair. You don't come home from Bob's party and then I find you at four o'clock in the morning in his cabin? Frank, don't you trust me at all? Would you? Yes, if you told me it was business. After all, I don't worry about you and Margot. Well, Margot is not in love with me. Frank, if you're telling me that there is no trust in this marriage, then we're in big trouble. We've been in trouble ever since you took this case. <sighs> Look, I guess we have nothing to say to each other, huh? My two minutes must be up. Where are you going? Does it matter? Are you just going to walk out of here before we work this thing out? The babysitter is at the apartment. I'm going to see you at the gardens. It's really ironic, really, that we're going to a wedding. We can pose as a husband and wife team for a change. And now, part two of As the World Turns. Frank! Maggie, Maggie, let him be. Well, he doesn't believe me. Leave you about what? About us? You know, none of this makes any sense at all. I mean, why would Frank be working with Haskell when Haskell's the one who got him shot and in the hospital? Well, does Frank know that? Well, he must know that. Well, who would have told him, not Mitch? Well, I don't know, maybe you're right. It's just not like Frank. He's never hidden anything from me. Never? Never! Well, what about that time he kidnapped me, Maggie? Cal, I'm saying that he wouldn't be involved in anything like this. Tapes don't lie, Maggie. This is not the Frank I know. Maybe you don't know him as well as you think. Sir. What's the matter? The scare you? No, that's all right. <laughs> oh, good Look at the time. I had no idea it was so late. Yeah. What are you doing up at this hour? Oh, just felt like some <sighs> munchies, some warm milk and pretzels to get me to sleep. Oh, no. Want home? No, thank you. No, 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 no. What about you? What about? What are you sneaking in so late at night through the door for? You have a hot date? <laughs> well, yes, as a matter of fact, I did with uh, the staff at Diana's. I want to make sure everything goes smoothly for the reception tomorrow night. And then I stopped by Bob's. I wanted to see if he survived the, uh, the bachelor party all right. How is uh, Dr. Bob? He's, he's doing fine. I'm a little concerned about you, though. How'd you survive? Hey, wait a minute. Let me see. You look a little pale to me. Are you okay. all right? Yeah, just you a little can't... wound up after the party, that's all. Oh. Did you have a good time? Yes. Are you sure, Kirk? Telling me the truth, huh? Sure. Do you mean, did I have any problems with Franny Hughes? Yeah, well, that's... Well, that's I didn't that... have any problems with Franny Hughes. As a matter of fact, we barely spoke to each other all oh, evening. Well, excuse me. You don't have to be so testy. I really am just concerned, that's all. I'm fine. <sighs> well, good. What about you? You seem a little testy about the yacht. Well, I guess I am. I, I miss Diana. I'm... If she were just here, she could help me with this reception. To m well, of course, I can do the reception without her. I mean, I can do that just fine. It's, I miss her. I'm so worried about her. I miss her so terribly. I miss her, too. The reception's going to go smoothly. I mean, Haskell doesn't concern himself with anything that goes on above board anyway. <laughs> what, does he, what does he have to do with anything? Well, he has the casino, but nobody at the reception's going to know that. No, there's no casino. Not anymore. It was right in. 
No, it wasn't. It most certainly was. Lisa, think. Did you see it in any of the newspapers? No. Come on, at least Lucinda Walsh would have put it on the front page, right? Now, wait. I was there tonight at the yacht. I was there. Did you open the door? Did you actually go downstairs into the casino? Of course not. Well, that didn't cross my mind to do that. Well, other people thought of it. And it's in full swing. Not a halfway deal at all. It's a full house. And just how do you know this? Um, I was there. I don't know why you won't let me help you. Oh, relax, Grandma. Oh, really, Mom, take advantage of it while you can. For oh, once, you don't have to cook. Yeah. Well, Franny, tell us all about Bula Bula and the Ivy League. <laughs> oh, yeah, do you like Yale? Oh, it's great. Yeah. The, the campus is lovely. It's uh -huh. just as you'd picture it. All the buildings have big arches and ivy all over them. But um, my dorm is, is one of the newer ones. I like my room, and my roommate's okay. Sounds good. And you, the classes you're taking? Well, most of them are pretty small, but I do have an English lecture class with 500 students in it. Wow. 500 wow. students yeah. at those that prices? So much for individualized attention. <laughs> yeah, and, and they're pretty tough. <laughs> okay. A lot of work. <laughs> Bet you find it a challenge, though, don't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. well... Well, cheer up, Franny. And Who's calling it this time of night? Three years, you can come back home. If you still want Hello. to. Hello. Dawn. Franny? Yes, it is. Have you any thought to your major yet? <laughs> Uh, no, actually, I haven't. I thought your father said you were thinking about English yes. as a major. Mm. Yeah, correct. I was, but I'm, I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> Who was that? Oh, it was the florist. He wanted to make sure of the address before he delivered the flowers. Well, did he have the right one? No, he was going to take them to a bowling alley. <laughs> How can you <laughs> laugh at such incompetence? Oh, come on, Mom. Where's your sense of humor? Mom, no, I was I just kidding. Like he just wanted to make sure there'd be somebody there to sign for you know, when Ellen wrote me that you had chosen the botanical gardens, I got so excited. That is the perfect spot for a wedding. You're easily excited. Oh. <laughs> I'm Boy, I'll tell you. Hello, Central. Hello. I told Amy and I have talked I told you not so to. many times. You just sit down and just I'm ask fine. kind of waiting she I told would like you to have. Be. Oh, what have you got? Lots I wish you hadn't called me. It's my phone. Nothing about clothes. Well, I gave you time. I can't wait to see what with somebody. Well, if she's I can't. Field, I can't talk right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, not now. Maybe, please. Look, maybe later. Have a show this year. Why did all this happen? I gotta go. Always had. Franny, who was that? I was a friend from school. At this hour and long distance. It's no big deal. Well, come on, Mom. You know college kids, they always have important things to talk about, no matter what the hour. Mm. At least when they're teenagers at home, the phone bill isn't so high. Hey, do you think Kim's up yet? Don't you think it's kind of late or, or early? Well, if I were getting married at dawn, I would have been up for hours. Look at us. Right. Oh, right. See? I have something I want to give her. Well, can't it wait? No, yeah. we can't. Bye-bye. Well, you, you should call first. Um. I guess she doesn't. <laughs> That's quite a little fireball you've got there, Doctor. <laughs> Kirk, how could you? You know you didn't work. Oh, come on, come on, relax. No, relax? How can I possibly relax? What? I didn't you know, do anything. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. You have no business going there. I had to check things out. I saw people going through the door of the casino and wanted to see what's still running. And it is. All right, all right. Once you did that, why didn't you come to me? Why didn't you tell me? Don't you realize that this is really very dangerous for you? Yes, yes, yes. I talked to Brian about that already. Well, Brian knows it's a problem. We all know you have a problem, Kirk. Yes. I know that. I talked to Brian about it. We had a good talk. I know I have a problem. And I have put an end to it. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I'm, I'm glad that Brian was at least helpful to you. I'm sure that he was. But he's not a professional at this. He, he couldn't cure you. I mean, look, Brian, even a professional couldn't cure you in one session. You've got problems. These things, it's taken years to build up all of these, these problems within you. And it can't be just overcome just in, in, at one time. Please, would you consider... Seeing a professional, would you? No, no Please. way! I'm not going to bring all that stuff up again for someone I don't even know. You cannot keep suppressing these things. If you do, all the problems are going to just come up again, and it's going to bother you more and more. Look, realizing you have a problem is half of the battle, right? All right, I have to admit you're right about that. Yes, it is, but 
All right. I I'm glad that you can face that. But do you realize you don't have to face it alone? Do yeah, you? I know. Okay. You know how much this family means to me. And, and you know that you can come to me whenever you need anything or have any kind of problem. I'm here for you, Kirk. I, I, I know that. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. But I think this is something I'm going to have to face on my own. Just one day at a time. But thanks anyway. <sighs> and hold on, I'm coming! Will you hold on? Oh! Damn it! Oh. Hold on! You'll wake up the neighbors! Andropolis! What are you doing here? Hey, Tom, I, I'm terribly sorry about this. Really, I am, but I had to see you in person. You're on sick leave. I mean, what could be so important? Do you have any idea of what time it is? Yes, sir. I, I, I do know what time it is. Well, that makes two of us. Now, do you mind leaving? No, Lieutenant, I can't. Not until I've talked to you. Well, can't it wait? I mean, you can see my o in the office first thing tomorrow. No, it this can't. morning. It can't wait till then. It, 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 Lieutenant, I, could, I couldn't see you in the office. I had to see you here. You know, someplace not suspicious. Suspicious? What are you talking about, Frank? Diana's. I know what is going on at Diana's. I told you to stay away from there. I know you did, sir, but I just couldn't. I couldn't, I couldn't sit and do nothing. Here, they're from the property clerk. Well, I can see what they are. What have you been doing? They're receipts for money. He's for $10,000. Well, do you mind telling me what they're for? Well, it's, it's, it's not all, all that easy, you see. Uh, Frank, try me. Look, I know you told me to stay out of it, but I, I just couldn't. I... Lieutenant, I'm your man. My man for what? Those are receipts for bribe money that I took. Lieutenant, I'm your man on the inside of Haskell's organization. I'm serious, and this guy is a resident at my hospital. And he stands up in front of all of these people, and he says, Kim's a very lucky young woman. I mean, here she's got Dr. Bob, who doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't run after women. He's boring. <laughs> Me, Mr. Excitement. Oh, it was fun. <sighs> I would have paid a large sum to have been there. <laughs> Too bad we weren't. <laughs> I can't think of a better candidate for a roast than the Honorable Chief of Staff. Well, I'm glad you two weren't there. We would have been there all night, and you have too much information on me that is not for publication. Well, I wouldn't have stopped this. <laughs> I know, that. Enough, I know, enough. I know. We don't get together that often to waste our time on this sort of foolishness. And besides, I would like to say something, please. Yes, Mother. Yes, Mom. Yes, Mother. It's rare indeed when I get to see my three children all together. I do so wish your father were able to be here, too. Sitting with us, talking like a family. Seems more and more these days families break apart. Look at us, living at opposite ends of the earth. But I know if any one needed the others, we'd all be together. That bond holds us close no matter where we are. Bob, this should be coming from your father. But since Chris couldn't make the trip, I guess it's up to me. You're getting married tomorrow, starting on a whole new journey. And your father's wish and mine for you and for Kim is that that journey be as warm and loving and full of joy as his life with me. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Ma. All the best, Bob. Seth. <laughs> Even you. <laughs> <laughs> now this... <laughs> laugh, this is from Danny. No kidding. <laughs> oh, boy. She did quite a job wrapping that present. I think I want her over here at Christmas to help me. Well, see, actually, Christmas is what inspired the gift. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because it's the only holiday that she knows anything about yet. She mm. wanted you to have this especially for your first Christmas with Bob. Ah, well, I cannot wait to see you. It is. <gasps> That is too much. Oh! That is some bird. Well, you're going to be on the top of my Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. Well, you better be. Yeah, I'll see. All right. Now, this one. 
Oh, is this is for me. You didn't have to give me a present. Well, of course I had to give no, you a present. You didn't, but yeah. I'm so glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> you know I love presents. <laughs> okay. Oh, honey. Oh, what a beautiful locket. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Sure, put it on. Okay. <clears throat> now, this locket is an old Stewart family heirloom uh -huh. that Grandma's mother passed on to her, and then she gave to me. And I just felt that you should have it, so you'd always remember you're part of our family. Oh, sweetheart, that is such a dear thing to do. I will just cherish it always. <laughs> and then when Daddy gets married, I will give it to her. Oh, okay. Oh, you and Bob are going to be so happy. Oh, dear. How can we miss? <laughs> I love you. I love you, too. And you. I know. You better get, I out, better of get out of here, huh? <laughs> you <laughs> bet. I don't want any of my bridesmaids to be late. Okay. Hey. Yeah. This is going to be a perfect day. already is. As a matter of fact, Andy is still sound asleep, and I had just about decided to have another cup of coffee. I'd love to have the company. Oh, good. I wanted a chance to see you before everything got underway. Oh, okay. Would you like to join me? Mm, no, thanks. I just had some with Uncle Don and Aunt Penny. Okay. What? Don and Penny are here? You're kidding. When did they come? I don't think I was supposed to tell you. It was a surprise. Oh, I have had enough surprises for one day. I'm glad you did tell me. But your father must have been absolutely floored. Oh, we all were. I mean, they just walked right in the door. Oh, how fabulous. <laughs> oh, that's going to make the whole thing so much more special. Isn't that nice? Honey, uh... Are you okay? I... I won't apologize again. I know I let you down. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. I really blew it when it came to being a bridesmaid. Well, you know, the thing is, what I really care about is you are here. Thank you, Kim. It's important to me that you know how glad I am that you're marrying Dad. I want you to be very happy. I, I think you're perfect for each other. That means a great deal to me. Thank you. I have something for you. Oh, my gosh! <laughs> this business of getting married is okay. <laughs> Here you go. <gasps> pretty, pretty. <clears throat> Fred! How beautiful. Something barred and something blue. Wait a minute. Wh where did you get this? My mother made it for my wedding. <gasps> I remember. That's right. I remember kidding her about making this for you. You were just a little baby then. I want you to wear it. Well, sweetheart, I... it's just lovely. Thank you. I... You know that I, I loved your mama very much. And there are times when you do something or you say something, and it's just like having her here with me. I love you. <laughs> I love you, Kim. Oh, baby. Oh. Aren't we silly? <laughs> oh, God. I better... I better go and get okay. ready. Okay, all right. You oh, what am I talking about? You'd better get you ready. Bet. Huh? <laughs> all right. Okay. I'll see you later. Bye bye. Bye, honey. Drive carefully. Oh, my dear Jennifer. I think you would probably rather have us save this for Franny's wedding. Gal, what am I going to do? <laughs> if only 
we hadn't had to pretend like we were having an affair, then maybe Frank wouldn't have been driven to this. Maggie, don't be so hard on yourself. You're just doing your job. I mean, he had no right to treat you the way he treated you. Now, you, you did the best you could under the circumstances. <laughs> have I? I'm not so sure. Well, do you think you could have stopped him from doing what he did? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, Maggie, I'll... I wish... I wish there was something I could do for you. Okay. <laughs> You've already done enough by not turning that tape in. Oh, that, that's the least I could do, Maggie. Well, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with that tape? Frank, how can you do this to me? I mean, who made you the detective in charge? I had no choice. Well, sure you did. You should have stayed home and rested up like My you were supposed to. My wife is in on this, so I, I don't care who's in on it. I make the assignments. Yes, sir. Do you have any idea what kind of trouble you could have gotten yourself into? Do you know who you're dealing with? Yes, I do. Jack Haskell. Lieutenant, that's why... Uh, don't you see? That's why I had to get involved in this. I know the guy from my days in New York City. We tried to pin him there. That's why I had to go, to go undercover, to protect Maggie. The guy could kill her if he had to. Look, any cop would have done what I did if he knew what I knew. Lieutenant, please, let's let me finish the case for Maggie and Jill. You know, I could have suspended you. Look, I'll take whatever is coming to me, but just let me finish the case, all right? All right. And I won't suspend you. You're a good cop, Andropolis. Boy, you're lucky I'm so even-tempered. Other guys wouldn't have put up with this. Thanks, Lieutenant. I yeah. appreciate it. You have a unique way of taking sick leave. So please, just fill me in on this. Are the feds still involved in it? They were. They pulled out. That's all I can tell you. Come on, there's got to be more. I mean, why did the, why did the feds pull out? They Please pulled the out and turned it over to me. Now listen, you've been straight with me, so I'm going to trust you. We're taking the casino tonight. We're going to bust it wide open. Stay tuned for Capital. Next on most of these CBS stations. Women's Fashions by Arthur Chapdale. Jewelry by Alexis Kirk. Join us tomorrow as the world turns.